Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. We appreciate you joining us. Got a lot of fun stuff coming up this week, and we're going to tell you about that here in a bit. First, discouraging news for people hoping that antioxidant vitamins might prolong their lives. Analysis of dozens of studies find people downing the antioxidant vitamins A, E, and C do not live longer. In fact, the higher quality studies pointed to a greater risk of death of those taking these vitamins. The actual cause of death in most studies was unknown, so maybe it's not because of the vitamins, but they're saying that, no, they don't live longer. As a matter of fact, a lot of them are still dying. Um, Another interesting thing here, we talked uh, this last week uh, with the mosquito guy. Remember Mosquito Dundee? Yes. Mosquitoes can track people up to 110 yards away by the substances in their breath. Mm. So mosquitoes know where you are based on your breath. That's how they... That's how they zone in on you. They can't see. Yeah. So that's why I don't get bit by mosquitoes, because I have such bad breath. That must be <laughs> it. Pretty sure that's what it is. Coming up, we'll tell you what special things are happening this weekend. That's on the way. John and Heidi. It's a special weekend, Heidi. Here's what we have going on. On Saturday, National Day of Unplugging, National Frozen Food Day, Sock Monkey Day, National Absinthe Day, whatever that is, uh, <laughs> National Maple Syrup Day, and St. Piran's Day and Iditarod begins Monday. I know on what is it? The tw- what? Saturday it says. Anyway, moving right along. Sunday, March sixth, National Maple Syrup Day. Sophia Kolvinsky. Didn't you just Math say it was day. Maple Syrup Day on on Saturday? Uh, yeah. Look at that. Two days in a row. Two days in a row is Maple it's, Syrup Day. And it day. does it's Maple Syrup Days with an S at the end, so it's ah, two in a row. Okay. Day of the Dude. Sunday, Daughters and Sons Day on Sunday, Namesake Day, Oreo Cookie Day, Girl Scout Sunday, and Mothering Sunday. So all of those things going on this weekend, so be sure to get out there and enjoy it. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds earning less than 6%, listen to this, commercial mortgage bridge loans pay 6% to 8%. That might be just what you need. You're placed in first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels, apartments, and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges, and you can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. I'll give you a toll-free number to call, 888 888- 547-8007. Start earning 6% now. Call 888-547-8007. John and Heidi. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. I'm glad I haven't had to go to a doctor lately. I hope I don't have to go anytime soon because two, count them, two U.S. brain surgeons cut open a patient's head before they realized they were operating on the wrong side. Whoa! Kevin Walsh was admitted to the hospital with a blood clot on the right side of his brain. Dr. Oh Renee Coltson and Mick Shaw opened up the left side before realizing the mistake oh that they had gosh. to operate on the right side. An investigation is underway. The surgeons have been suspended from the Long Island College Hospital in New York. Now, we have heard... Just in the last year or two, stories of people removing the wrong limbs. I came in because I had a you know bad foot. My right foot was hurting, and they cut off my left foot. Uh, we've heard about arms where they cut off the wrong arm. And now we have somebody who got their head chopped open on the wrong side. But when they're saying it's on the right side, I suppose if if it's on my right side or if I'm looking at you from the top, it might be, you know, the left side. Yeah, I'm sorry. There should be a way around those kinds of mistakes. Yeah, they should that's somehow a pretty severe mistake. mark people. And that's where the one hospital said they've not had any problems because their solution was simply this. They have a Sharpie where they write, this is the one, this is not the one. Yeah. So that's literally what they do. They write on the on the hand that needs to be removed or the limb that needs, needs to be removed, remove, and the other one, this one's fine, don't remove this one. So that's seriously, wow. as silly as that sounds, that is their solution. Maybe they should have done that with this guy. Yeah, Kevin Walsh. They chopped open the wrong side of his noggin mm. to fix his blood clot. All I can say is I'm glad I'm not going in for brain surgery anytime soon. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. 
The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. Do you take this drunk to be your lawfully wedded husband? A bridegroom-to-be got so drunk before his wedding that he had to show up at the altar, uh, that when he showed up at the altar, the angry bride-to-be not only called off the wedding, she had the groom arrested. Oh. The day wasn't a total loss. The guests at the wedding quickly proposed to the jilted bride, a guest there. She said yes. Minutes later, they were hitched. So... The, the, the groom showed up drunk. Right. She booted him out, got him arrested. Somebody else from the wedding proposed to her. She said yes. She still got married. That's crazy. What kind of... What is that? She must not have been very much in love. I'm not sure what happened there. This <laughs> that's, sounds... That's nuts. Kind of like the plot of a movie. Not a good movie, but it sounds like the plot of a movie, doesn't it? Mm. I remember a comedian once that said, it was Jerry Seinfeld, said that's why the men all dress the same. And they're all on a line, and they say, do you take this man to be? You know, everybody just takes one step to the left. (laughs) So uh, that's apparently what happened here. Interesting. It's the kind of thing that happens when your brain is on drugs. Your moment of duh for today, planning makes perfect. Not planning results in quite the predicament. In the spinach E. coli disaster of the late 2006, this uh, happened a couple years ago, a California congressman decided to show the citizens of his state that it was time to start eating spinach again. So Representative Sam Farr staged a public spinach-eating news conference to demonstrate (laughs) that the leafy greens are now safe following the nationwide E. coli breakout. Guess what, though? He got E. coli. The the news conference had to be scrapped when Farr couldn't find any spinach in local grocery stores. (laughs) He's like, we're going to have this big event. We're going to have spinach for everybody. Everybody's going to eat spinach, and spinach will be good again. And then when they... They actually staged the event, but they had to call it off because they couldn't even find spinach. Oh, You're like, well, way to go there, Mr. Farr. We have no spinach. Coming up in a moment, we have your scoop of the day. That is on the way on this weekend. The scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now, your scoop of the day. A recent study suggests that magma chamber, the the magma chamber underneath of the Yellowstone Park, is two and a half times larger than previously thought. That means if or when it erupts, it would be 2,000 times more powerful than Mount St. Helens eruption of 1980. Yikes. So that would be a big old deal. When I was a kid, we actually went to Mount St. Helens. We were out there when there was ash everywhere, and we had a. Did you ever see the big boulder? It's really light. I don't think we're supposed to take it. When I was a little kid, my dad picked up this rock. We always called it a moon rock, but it came from uh, Mount St. Helens and a bunch of ash from that as well. We we were on a little trip going out to see my grandma, and and, uh, I remember seeing that. And when I was a little boy, I was like four years old or whatever, five years old, I thought I saw Bigfoot. So ever, ever since then, I believe in Bigfoot. It was probably just some guy walking in the woods. I have no clue. Moving right along. Two tourists driving in Norway's Arctic region had to be rescued by dog sled... Because they turned when their GPS told them to turn, and the road that they turned on has been closed since the early 1960s, before GPS navigation devices even existed. So somehow, that didn't work out very well. Kim Kardashian West. I'm not a fan of the whole... That, I'm, I'm not, not a fan that. of them at all. Well, she recently was, she was uh, on her blog or whatever she does. I don't know what she does. But she was standing up for her hubby. Because I guess he was criticizing in tweets, he was being outlandish in tweets, saying terrible things about Wiz Khalafia. I don't know who that is. I have no clue. Is that a person or is that a product? I have no idea. Sounds like something you'd put on crackers. I'll have some Wiz Khalafia, please. Uh, Taylor Swift and Amber Rose. And he was praising his new album as the, quote, greatest album of all time. Whatever. In a post that Kim posted uh, titled, Currently... She says, loving my husband and hating that people don't get that Kanye will stand up against the whole world for his creativity and art. Uh, Yeah, he's going to have to keep standing up for it because I think the guy's lost it. And I'm not saying it's not the greatest album of all time. I've not heard it, 
But I can tell you, I've heard his other music. I doubt that it's the greatest <laughs> album of all time. Not a betting woman, yeah. but I'd put some money on this I one. I would, too. <laughs> hey, moving right along. Health officials say one reason so many American kids are overweight is that few of them have a park nearby. About one in five homes have parks within a half mile. Same number have a fitness center or recreation center within that distance. I was going to say, there's parks everywhere. A report from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention reports also finds that fewer than one in five U.S. high school students get at least an hour of physical activity a day. They're saying we need more parks and we need more fitness centers. And we Just because you've got them doesn't mean people use them. That's force, the problem. Force people to go use them, too. I'm not yeah. sure. Hey, do you know if you're getting enough sleep or not? I don't. Uh, if you don't get enough sleep, it could be harmful to your health. But it could also, uh, you can now repair some of the damage done to your body by napping. They're saying get more sleep, even if it's in little napping doses. So do I get to take naps at work Yeah, now? let's do it. Really? I think we should put a cot in here, a fold out or something. Recent studies suggest that the way to reverse the damage that's been caused by not getting enough sleep uh, and the poor health effects from a bad night's sleep are brief daytime naps. I'm serious. I think that'd be cool. Researchers from the University of Paris, Descartes, Sauban, Paris, Cité, whatever that is. That's all the name. I don't even know how to say it. Uh, they found that naps seem to restore hormones and proteins involved in stress and immune functions go back to normal levels. So you're going to lose some stress and you're going to reboost your immune system. I'm on board for all of this. I need to boost my immune system. I've been uh, eating, what is that stuff called? I, I just oh, I just ran out of it too. Um, airborne, is that what it is? You were eating some vitamin C stuff. Yeah, that's vitamin C stuff. Anyway, I've been down on that by the fistfuls here lately because I f- think I feel a cold coming on. <laughs> Time for our strange law. In Carrizozo, New Mexico, it's unlawful for women to go out in public with hairy legs or hairy faces. So, ladies, that makes sense to me. Ladies, it's against the law to go out that way. So, it's not just because you want to shave. I mean, <laughs> you've got to shave. Coming up here in a bit, we've got your bonus scoop, second helping on the way. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi show is brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds earning less than 6%, listen to this. Commercial mortgage bridge loans pay 6% to 8%. That might be just what you need. You're placed in first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels, apartments, and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges, and you can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. Start earning 6%. Go to commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com right now. What are you waiting for? Go to commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com. Again, that's commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com. John and Heidi. And we've got your second scoop. Uh, it's a weekend, so we always get a bonus scoop here. Don't try to friend Malia Arwood on Facebook. You won't find her there. <laughs> You also won't find. How would find, you friend her then? Well, you won't find Thomas Chin either, or Kariana Goldschmidt, right. or Jake Edelstein. Is there a reason for this? Well, it says more than 900 million people worldwide check their Facebook accounts at least once a month, but millions are more. A bit, millions more are what they refer to as Facebook holdouts. They say they don't want Facebook. They insist they don't need Facebook. They say they're living life just fine without the long forgotten acquaintances that the world's largest social network wants to connect you to. They are resistors. A quote here says, I'm absolutely in touch with everyone in my life that I want to be in touch with. I that's agree with that. That's says. why I didn't go to class reunions. I, don't, I agree with that. And she goes on to say, I don't need to share triviality with someone that I might have known for like six months, 12 years ago. <laughs> End quote. <laughs> that actually makes sense. I think very it's funny, good sense. Uh, not to get off on a tangent, but I remember when we very first... Do you remember when you, you were on Facebook before me? Remember yes. that? And do you remember why I opened a Facebook account? I have no idea. I remember. Uh, we had a friend that was getting divorced, and we went to her divorce party. We get to her divorce party, and there's a kid that I went to middle school with at this divorce party. And he was flirting with my wife. And he knew she was my wife, but he kept coming over and talking to her, and he even said... 
you know, if you ever, he said something along the lines of, if you ever break up with John, you should reach out to me or you should, you should get a hold of me or something. I have several people that say stuff do you remember like that? that to me. I do remember I'm, that. I'm not even going to say his name because I don't want to make Danny mad. But, uh, <laughs> oh, did I say that? Sorry, Mr. Cummings. Anyway, he was uh, flirting with my wife big time at our friend's divorce party. And we got home and you said, oh, hey, he friended me on Facebook. And I was like, what the, what's going on here? <laughs> so I went on, that was literally the reason I finally said, fine, I'll get on Facebook if I got to get on Facebook. So I opened an account, literally just so I could see what he was up to. <laughs> I, I have unfriended him, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. He's a big giant lib. Oh, well, I don't know if he is or not. All I know is I was like, hey, 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 she's married to me. <laughs> I'm standing right next to you. Leave her alone. Come on. Anyway. And, and one of my other favorite Facebook uh, stories, your brother. <laughs> yeah, he was her, her on for like Jason. five minutes. Yeah, he had a Facebook account for like five minutes, and then he closed it because there were people that All were trying to friend him. these people were asking to be my friend. He's like, I don't know these people. Well, we went to like elementary school together, but I don't want to be their friend. <laughs> How do I get off of this thing? <laughs> so, uh... I thought that was funny. Moving right back to our stories here. <laughs> In Germany, a guy broke into a pharmacy by climbing through a skylight. But when he was ready to pack up his loot and leave, he noticed he was a little too short to reach the skylight. Oh, what an idiot. Couldn't go back out that way. So he tried the doors and windows. Guess what? They were locked. He had no choice but to call the police to oh come get gosh. him out. Oh, my gosh. They were really glad to come pick him up. <laughs> they said, yeah, we'll, we'll be right there. We'll be right there. We'll Don't go you. anywhere. <laughs> That's right. You can't. All right. Paul Paris of San Francisco. He's a convicted bank robber. He went on a crime spree just one week after being released from prison. This is not a... At all a good idea. You don't do that. He was also wearing the same clothes he wore when his probation officer took his photo the day before, or the day he was released, rather. Apparently, he had been in jail a long time. He didn't bother to keep up with the fashion trends. He was wearing 1980s-style clothing, including a members-only jacket. Very easy to spot on the surveillance cameras. Now he gets to go back to those modern-day prison garbs because he's going back. Hmm. That was not a smart thing for him to do. Have you ever heard of cruel and unusual punishment? <clears throat> yes, I have. Well, I've got some cruel and unusual punishment to share here. Uh, I don't know if it's cruel and unusual, but at least it's odd. Prisoners at York County Prison, this is in York, Pennsylvania, they have to purchase their condiments if they want them at mealtime. Things like ketchup, mustard, salt, and pepper, sugar. That's no longer free. Here's why. They have a tendency to trash the condiments. Now, a small packet of ketchup is eight cents. A packet of Whoa. mustard is ten cents. Whoa! You can buy a hundred sugar packets for two dollars and ten cents. So they're, uh, they're the people there were sick and tired of these guys doing what they were doing, making messes with the condiments. They're like, you know what? Somebody's got to pay for that stuff, so you can't make a mess with it. So now they get to pay for that stuff. Wow! Coming up here in a moment, we've got all kinds of fun facts for you, but I want to share this one since I've got a moment here. Uh, seating on the first scheduled. Inner city commuter airplane flight consisted of wicker chairs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you imagine really? that's how it was back when they started. Their very first airplane flight was a commuter flight, uh, Ford Tri City Motors, and they had wicker chairs, 11 of them, that you just sit them wherever you wanted in the back of an open airplane. Sounds a little dangerous. Yeah, Ford later replaced them with aluminum framed leather covered chairs, which is, you know, way nicer. <laughs> Coming up in a bit, we have your fun fact that's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll-free at 1-844-204-1055. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? According to a recent study, the average man falls in love six times during his life. Really? Yeah, I'm way below average. I've only fallen in love once, and that is with you. Oh, you're such oh. a liar. Give me, give me a kiss. You're so full mm-hmm. of it today. She's my wife. Of course I'm in love with her. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Americans, on average, use about 580 pounds of paper per year per person. I don't think I'm anywhere close to I don't that. think I do either, but you just never know. I wonder if, like, toilet paper counts towards that, paper towels, you know, maybe. I don't know. Uh, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Annually, 17 tons of gold is used to make wedding rings in the United States. 17 tons. Hmm. That's a lot of gold. And fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The first envelope with gummed flaps were produced in 1844. They've been around really? a while. They were produced in Britain. They were not immediately popular because it was thought to be a serious insult 
to send a person's saliva to someone else. <laughs> so when they first got him, they're like, what is you spit all over this? I don't want to open that. So I don't know. I'm not sure what to do to get him to catch on, but whatever it is, it worked. Coming up, miracle or coincidence? It's on the, it's on, oh, that is on the way. There we go. <laughs> John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by RadioReallyWorks.com. I know you're listening to a podcast, but did you know the John and Heidi Show is also a radio show? And for those of you who have businesses, you should consider using radio to advertise your business. We can even help you create some catchy little jingles or amazing radio ads that will help pull people in. Get all the details or just learn more at RadioReallyWorks.com. That's RadioReallyWorks.com. John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. Do you believe in miracles? Yes, absolutely. I believe in miracles. Do you believe in coincidences? I don't. I think I don't think anything's a but coincidence. I don't think every coincidence is a miracle, so no. that's the thing. I mean, well, I, I, I believe that some things happen by chance, yes. So take a listen to this. For 15 years, Linda Bothy sat at a desk assigned, uh, I'm sorry, against the north corner of her office at a funeral parlor. For no reason at all, she moved it. She doesn't even know why. She decided, I'm going to move my desk after all these years. Again, 15 years. Just as she did. A couple days later, a vehicle barreled through the wall exactly where she used to sit, and it crashed into what was her workspace. She says, I think God was looking out for me. Absolutely. She admitted, oh, my computer's dinking around on me here. She admitted that she may have been uh, killed if she hadn't moved her desk for no particular reason. She works at the Euchre Witt Funeral Home in Wisconsin, and she said she was at her computer every morning at 745. That fateful morning, she had taken her car to be serviced and was a few minutes late, a second little coincidence miracle that saved her life. When Linda drove to work, she was shocked to see a Chevy Blazer crash through the wall, landed inches from her desk, spewing bricks and concrete and insulation around the room like a deadly like deadly shrapnel. So she wasn't in there when it happened because she was also out getting her vehicle fixed. Mm. So that, again, is just amazing to me. So there's two little things, I guess, not one little thing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Somebody was definitely watching out for her, though. So sure. if she had been there on time and hadn't moved her desk, she would have been squished. So that's really, really cool. And again, but my point is, you know, you say you don't believe in coincidences. There yeah. are coincidences. Yeah, yeah. Like your name's yeah. John. My name's John. Oh my gosh, that's a miracle. No, I don't think it's a miracle. Yeah, see, that's a coincidence. That's just interesting. There's two different. There's what's a coincidence? There are about coincidences. It? Coincidentally, <laughs> my name is John. Who's this other John you speak of? <laughs> All right. Anyway, I think that's really a cool thing. Coming up here in a bit, uh, we could all be in some kind of danger in the office. We'll tell you about that in a bit. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelitor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelitor.com. Heidi hates it when I do that. I gave you the headline ahead of time that we could all be in danger in the office. And she's like, why would you say that without telling them what it is? Well, if you work outside of the home, there's a good chance somebody wants to wallop you. A new survey <laughs> says that one out of six U.S. workers got so angry at a coworker during the last year, they felt like hitting the coworker, But they didn't. Incredibly, among workers under the age of 35 and those in sales... <laughs> or office or clerical jobs, 22% said they wanted to strike a fellow employee. 22%. That's a lot. That's a big said, number. I want to just smack, I want to smack some sense into that boy or girl. So the younger you are, the more interested you are in abusing your fellow workers. <laughs> I'm glad we work with a bunch of old people here. They don't want to hit me. They just can't wait for their hearing to completely go so they don't have to listen to me anymore. That's pretty much what's going on here. Coming up, we got the big bucks in the news. We'll tell you all about that in a short while. John and Heidi. The excitement may have uh, maybe weaned a bit, uh, but the television show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, remember that? Oh, yeah. That's on, in countries all around the world. There's variations all over. Now there's one in Russia, but winners don't really win big bucks in Russia. The fan- financially strapped Russian television station is not able to give millions, so they're giving away 1,361 rubles. Which that is... works out to $47.46 oh, wow. in U.S. currency. <laughs> wow. Given the lack of prize money, they've changed the name to Who Wants to Be Fabulously Wealthy? <laughs> so there, if you have $47.46, you are, quote, fabulously wealthy. Yeah. They say since they can't give away a lot of money, they're making the questions a whole lot easier. A million rubles, by the way, 
works out to $34,756 in the U.S. So even if they gave away a million rubles, it wouldn't be nearly what we give away on our show. I have some political comments I would like to make, but you don't allow me no. to do that on this program. No. So I hey, will keep if you want to hear shut. Heidi's political comments, I brought her on for the first time ever this last week at politicalstorm.com. They've had me do some uh, little updates on there, some podcasts. And for the first time ever, I gave Heidi uh, open range to say whatever she wanted to say. <laughs> and uh, that, that podcast has only been deleted eight times. I keep putting it back up. No, it hasn't been. Go check it out at politicalstorm.com. Coming up, people change their names for various reasons. We're going to talk about why one woman has had to rename herself. It's on the way. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds earning less than 6%, listen to this, commercial mortgage bridge loans pay 6% to 8%. That might be just what you need. You're placed in first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels, apartments, and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges, and you can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. I'll give you a toll-free number to call, 888-547-8007. Start earning 6% now. Call 888-547-8007. John and Heidi. Would you ever change your name, Heidi? No. So there's not a name out there you're going, hey, I always wish I'd have been called such and such. No. You kind of just like the name you got? Yeah, I'm good with it. Well, people change their names all the time, and there's a lot of different reasons, but one woman decided to change her name, and she did it because of her favorite car. Oh, good Lord. A woman in England who couldn't even drive at the time changed her last name to that of her dream car, Subaru Impereza. Natalie Elliott decided not to go back to her maiden name when she got divorced. She didn't want to keep her married name, but she's like, I'm not going back to that. I'm going to change it to whatever I want. She wanted something exciting. She wanted something that said, hey, I'm not the old Natalie no more. So she changed her name. She said uh, she wanted something racy and decided to go for the name of her favorite car, that's Her friends and family think super. she's gone mad. She's now Natalie Impreza. Um, I don't even know what a Subaru Impreza looks like. <laughs> I have no idea. Is it a cool car? It must be, if that's her favorite car. And her ex is going, see what I mean? This is why I left her. <laughs> yeah, she's you, nuts. You guys were all wondering why it wasn't working? <laughs> she named herself after a car. <laughs> Not even a cool car. She could have been Natalie Ferrari. Wow. Could have been Natalie Lamborghini. No, she's Natalie Subaru Impreza. (laughs) (laughs) And there's nothing wrong with that. If you drive a Subaru Impreza, please. I don't know what they look. They could be very cool. But why change your name to that? That is the most ridiculous thing. Share a picture of your car and let me know what your car looks like. Because I'd like to see one. Now, I guess I could Google it, too. If I really cared, I would do that. But but I don't. I probably don't. (laughs) Anyway, Natalie, I'm happy that you're happy. And that makes everybody happy. Coming up in a bit, we've got some good news to wrap things up. That's on the way. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to end things here with good news, and I've got some for you today. This is from a new special report from Dr. James Dobson. He talks about the importance of grace and forgiveness, and this, I think, is a good thing. And it's especially important as it relates to spouses and children. He says, too often the ones closest to us are the ones that experience the least amount of attributes from us. So they're saying, you know, you should forgive them more often. In a free resource, he will encourage you to give your family your best when it comes to these critical attributes, and you can access a copy on his website. I'll throw a link on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. But I wanted to share that first before I share this. These stories go hand in hand. They're both going to be on our Facebook page. NBA coach Monty Williams. Now, you got to understand this first about us. We are not sports people. No. I have no clue who this guy is. But I can tell you I'm very impressed with him. And this is something that would be really, really hard for me to do. He's from the Oklahoma City Thunder. 
NBA coach Monty Williams is choosing to forgive the family who killed his wife. His wife, Ingrid Williams, was in a head-on vehicle collision that lost control and crossed the lanes earlier this month in Oklahoma. And he stood at the pulpit, gave God the, God the glory and his wife's eulogy, and according to the Charisma News article, Williams referenced Romans 8.28 and said, This is hard for my family, but this will work out, and my wife would punch me if I were to sit up here and whine about what's going on. That doesn't take away the pain, but it will work out because God causes all things to work out, and he forgave the family. You know how hard that would okay, be. but it's not like the family did it on purpose. No, That's I something completely different. So their car went out of control. I don't know exactly what was happening in the vehicle. Don't know, but their vehicle went out of control, crossed the right. lines, killed his wife, and he's forgiven the family. That is just awesome. For something like that, that's, that's I think, easy to forgive because they're, they're in pain as well. They're suffering easier. as well. Yeah, yeah. easier. It's yeah, not like someone maliciously tried to destroy a company that you've built for six years. That's completely different. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's unforgivable. What are you, it's like some, some that is that is vengeance worthy. <laughs> just calm down, Heidi. I'm just saying, two completely different situations. You brought up the second one, not me. <laughs> but I think it's time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. For those of you that know what she's talking about, for those of you that don't, you don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving right along. That's going to do it for a weekend edition of the John and Heidi Show. Time now for the bonus break. Only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. And your bonus break is brought to you by the good folks at Knowles Systems. If you haven't heard of them, well, you need to listen up because i got to tell you all about this. If you have funds earning less than 6%, maybe you should check into a better system like Knowles Systems. They have commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com. If you've never heard of a commercial mortgage bridge loan, I'm going to tell you what this is. It's a loan paying 6% to 8%, and it could be just what you need. You're placed in the first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels and apartments and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges. You can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. If you'd like more info on how you can start earning 6% or more right now, call 888-547-8007. I'll give you that number again in a second. But first, you might want to just check out the website if that's easier. CommercialMortgageBridgeLoans.com. Again, CommercialMortgageBridgeLoans.com or 888-547-8007. And the bonus break is going to be short and sweet, Heidi. Short and sweet. First of all, does it pay to pretend to be somebody else or something else? A couple of species of butterflies have evolved in a clever way to survive. Birds avoid the monarch butterfly because they know it has a bitter taste. The viceroy butterfly takes advantage of the monarch's reputation, and they mimic its appearance pretending to be a monarch to fool the birds. So they're saying that, hey, in that case, it pays to pretend to be somebody that you're not. And this is our last thing, uh, signs that you spend too much time online. You ready for these signs? Ready. Tech support calls you for help. <laughs> Next one, you find yourself trying to cock your head 90 degrees when you smile. <laughs> when you look at road signs, you wonder why you're always, they're always yelling at you. See, they're all caps. Mm. Uh, when at work, your boss constantly reminds you that the word I should be capitalized. Another sign you spend too much time online, you have a vanity car tag with your screen name. I believe that's a remote, con or what do they call that? A license plate. Uh, next, you double-click your TV remote. I've done that before. I've done that. And the last thing that you do to know that you spend way too much time online, you change your screen name so much that you have to look at your own profile just to see who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I know people who do that. I've got friends on Facebook. Yeah, they keep know, changing their names. I don't know they keep changing their names. <laughs> and they change the photo to different people, and there's different names. I'm like, who the heck is, oh, yeah. I know who that is. Why it's do you bizarre. keep changing your name? I don't think I can change my name. I, I, why would you want to? I don't know. I don't want to. I want to stay who I am. Coming up here in a bit, uh, we, we're, you're going to be able to do whatever you want because we're going to wrap this thing up. This bonus break has been brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds earning less than 6%, check out their website, commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com. Commercial Mortgage Bridge Loans pay 6 to 8%. It's awesome. Check it out, commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com.